its amazing staying power by taking its fifth night premiership in 14 years. But the win was a costly one, with Ruckman Greg Deer injuring his knee and missing the rest of the season. Greg Deer, and he does not look too good at all. Gary Ablett announced his retirement and Geelong went into mourning. The sheer weight of public pressure saw him end his self-imposed exile on June the 10th. Tony Lockett shared the headlines with the reluctant cat. His mysterious back ailment sidelined him for 11 weeks. But the wait was worth it as Plugger returned in stunning style, kicking 34 goals in three games. Well, he'll kick it, Don. Famous names there. Straight through, mate. There's his 11. The big talking points of 1991, however, were the interstate teams. Adelaide had started the season magnificently. They crashed Hawthorne, and the wildly parochial crowd enjoyed the sight of Dermot Brereton being invited to yet another tribunal sitting. A kid top five matches. The West Coast Eagles were simply awesome. They held Melbourne to only two goals in match one and set all sorts of records as they won 12 games in a spectacular winning streak. Off the field, Fitzroy was struggling to survive. It called on the public, in the most emotive tones, to dig deep. Thanks largely to this commercial, the plea was answered. Carlton was on its way to its worst season ever, and the once proud Blues sunk to new depths when they kicked a solitary goal against Footscray. Well done, Mark Arsiri. Arsiri had helped salvage some pride as the Blues registered their lowest score since 1904. It was a season of outstanding individual performances in front of goals. We witnessed a youngster named Darren Cuthbertson strike a purple patch for Melbourne. Paul Hudson may not have been the prolific goal kicker Dad Pete turned out to be, but to the Hawks, he was just terrific in 91. Peter Sumich signalled his intentions with consistently large hauls, though his angled kicking style had the Boffins in the West searching for answers, while Peter Dacos was just magical. Look at that. At Moorabbin, Tony Lockett kept on dominating. And as he gauged this wind again, look at this. Perfect kick. Melbourne's Todd Viney claimed he was bitten by Chris Lewis. He pointed the finger, and in an interstate hookup, the West Coast forward was given three matches. Simon Minton Connell was the hero of the moment, but in this fickle sporting world, that meant little. He was traded to Sydney later in the year for Greg Williams. Oh, no, he has a goal. For the first time, a finals match was held out of Melbourne, and all of Perth wanted to be at Subiaco to see the Eagles take on Hawthorne. The result was unexpected, and to legions of sand gropers, quite unwelcome, with Hawthorne pulling off the major upset of the season. Jakovic kicked eight to guide Melbourne to an elimination final win over Essendon. And St Kilda had every reason to feel hard done by. They'd played magnificently, finished fourth, yet a loss to Geelong saw them instantly eliminated. The stage had been set for the first interstate grand final in league history, a match that would draw crowds from Perth and leave the Western Australian capital almost deserted on that last Saturday in September. The Hawks, however, have been the team by which all other sides over the last decade have been measured. And the relentless Hawthorne machine rolled into another gear. Bangs it back. It's going to break all the records today, Tucky. To Brereton, to Mew. Some of the most famous names in this famous club. To Dunstall. On the 50 metre line, he'll kick it from. Just outside, Dunstall leans back, kicks it straight through. Six goals for Dunstall. The Norm Smith medal to Paul Deere and the cup to the oldest man in football, Michael Tuck. Little did the 37-year-old veteran in game number 426 realise that this would be his swan song. 11 grand finals and seven premierships, plus the game's record will take a lot of beating in the decades ahead. The season might have been over officially, but nothing keeps football out of the news. The city of Melbourne was stunned by the untimely death of Collingwood strongman Darren Mullane in a car accident, and thousands mourned his passing. Earlier this week, Essendon fans were saddened at the retirement of skipper and champion Tim Watson. The 282-game veteran had joined the club as the original baby bomber as a 15-year-old back in 1977, but 15 years at the highest level had taken its toll. The game will miss him. And finally, three accolades. The mark of the year to North's Brett Allison. 
the goal of the year to Collingwood's Peter Dacos. And to be honest, it could have been one of many. And the player of the year, no contest. Brownlow medalist Jimmy Steins, the lad from Dublin, won everything going. And there was no argument from anyone.